and all the time amen it is good to see every single person on this wonderful Sunday morning I just had the opportunity yesterday to return from a city very close to Canada on the border and we had a chance to be there with a few guys of ours to minister to a group of young people who've been coming to our conference also had the privilege of meeting people who got they've been prayed for by their church for a long time and they got I guess kind of like um, invited to our conference and their life got changed here at the conference and now they go to church and now they're saved and and just was really inspired by the fact that a lot of young people uh, from outside of this mountain on the other side that really look uh, to our ministry they get really inspired and listen to our podcast and just get really really blessed by what God is doing in your life and what God is doing in our life in Jesus name let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ for that we want to remind you that in three Sundays so not next Sunday but Sunday after that it's going to be something special something new that is happening in our church we've never had this before we will have about 12 to 15 interns that are coming into Tri-Cities that will be staying with us for three weeks and so we are really excited for that let's give Jesus a round of applause for that as well And so we're going to have just a, not just more people but it's going to be a school that we're having and we are really really pumped about that. And there's actually three people from that church that is moving here and so um, it's really exciting time. Yeah, how many of you guys, we saw the, the prophecy clip by Shepard Bushiri? We're going to have to get used to using those words. Major. We were driving with, uh, with Ivan yesterday so we were practicing that. Papa, prophesy, go deeper, go deeper. So um, uh, Eric and Ivan, uh, they will be taking the microphone. But the awesome news is this week, uh, Prophet Shepherd Bushiri confirmed that he is coming to our conference in the fall. Yeah. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So brushing up your major one, go deep up, up, up vocabulary because uh, it's going to be an awesome, awesome time. We are really, really excited and stuff. And so I know it's a different culture, but the gospel of Jesus Christ is power. And even if it's not our culture, we embrace the power and the love and the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, somebody asked me this week, they wrote to me, uh, one person wrote like, what's wrong with you guys? Why are you so obsessed with all these black preachers? And I said, like, why are you so racist? Um, I, I don't see color and not because I'm color blind but because when we are cut we all bleed red amen and so for us it's not about African preachers Ukrainian preachers South, you know South Korean it's about the man of God well why are you all obsessed about the Jewish preachers all the guys who wrote the Bible were Jewish you know so this is not about Jewish African, Asian, Russian, American, Canadian, Latino. This is about the power and the glory of Jesus Christ. Somebody say yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to remind every single person today and that's what I want to speak to us briefly. God has a plan and a purpose for our church. God has a vision for our church. We declare that our income today will become our tithe tomorrow. We declare that what we see today, tomorrow this is going to be a group of just the home group leaders. We declare today the meeting that we had at the track or the meeting that we will have at Toyota Center next year for the Race to Deliver conference. That's going to be our normal average Sunday morning service. In Jesus mighty name. Can somebody say amen? Even if you look Okay, since only half of us were clapping, let's, the rest of you, just borrow faith from us. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. That's our vision. That's our goal. If perverted people, if twisted psychopaths, if people who have no contribution to the community, if people who gather in the large stadiums only to run around this piece of cloth which doesn't have gold inside just air and what we're going to be most of us watching God bless Steph Curry in Jesus name but the the finals that are going on if people are gathered by thousands and twenty thousands just to see a ball being hit in the hoops and, and God bless the sports sports are awesome we need to in, in do sports love sports and everything but we cannot lower the standard of the power of Jesus Christ to just small little barn meetings while the largest stadiums belong just for people to run with the ball 
those people who are running with the ball they're just borrowing those meetings and those places because those places were designated to the one who created the very soil those places are built on the creator of heaven and the earth can somebody say amen hallelujah but but for that to happen for that to happen we as Christians must understand everything starts with the vision and for us everything starts with the prayer the size of our vision has to indicate the size of our prayer the reason why our prayer has to be bigger deeper stronger more consistent the reason why it happens at 9 15 on Sunday at 5 in the morning on Monday through Friday and the evening on Friday night the reason why prayers happen even after lunch you come here and there are people praying and we want to see a 24 hour an army rising up at home and a church praying why because the vision that we have it demands a different kind of prayer there are churches that don't pray and honestly they don't have a reason to because if the vision is to just keep your salvation and have your children not to drug smoke and get high then that vision doesn't require too much prayer but if your vision is to see thousands locally millions globally people be healed people be delivered and not just be saved but save others that vision demands your prayer life not just to be Lord God bless this salad and bless my family but has to be deeper and it has to be more somebody say amen. amen let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ we live in a nation today that you know it goes over one week everybody debates about the Trump another week everybody talks about Hillary's emails another week everybody talks about the, the bathroom issues and then last week the whole week everybody talked about the gorilla our world lives about just just shaking gorillas and bathrooms and that's what our world lives in and a lot of us as Christians especially Christians in America who believe we want to see our nation being impacted by God a lot of Christians they rise up and they say we need to put prayer back into our schools you know the government removed prayer from our schools but the reason why prayer was removed from schools because it was long gone from the churches and from people's homes why fight to bring prayer into schools when you don't even pray at home why fight to bring prayer into the government where you don't even come to morning prayer what we want to raise God didn't say a government is a house of prayer God says a church is a house of prayer God didn't say for the school to be a house of prayer God says for your house to be a house of prayer and listen the government can remove prayer from school that's what they do but you shouldn't ever remove prayer out of your own closet and out of your own house can somebody say amen and there's nothing wrong with petitioning the government and making your voices heard we need to do that but not at the expense of having a prayerlessness in our home so we can have prayer in the schools in Jesus name amen I'm just going to throw a few quotes and then we go read in the word of God. Daniel would rather spend a night with the lions than miss a day without prayer. Daniel would rather spend a night with the lions than to miss a day without prayer. As the devil rose against prayer during that time and Daniel didn't bend into that. Today the devil will not threaten you to stop praying. He'll just make you busy. He'll just make you lazy he'll just make you feel like you know what it's not your personality to pray you just don't have a calling of an intercessor and all of that is nothing but pathetic lies from the pit of hell you are a child of God you were called to pray you know when, when John Chi was here how many people came up to me and even now writing and they say do you have John Chi's number I, I need to talk to John Chi and people would get angry people would get passionate and of course I won't give him a John Chi's number and I said that's not gonna happen you're not gonna talk to John Chi John Chi is too busy but I need to talk to John Chi and I'm, I'm thinking John Chi doesn't want to talk to you but there is a God that John Chi talks to that is asking you talk to me there is a God in Jeremiah 33 3 he said call on me he says my number is available and how many times you know we would rather beg and seek to get a contact from someone when there is a God who that person depends on every day beckons us says come 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 and we said no 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 no. but I want to talk to him then would rather spend a day a night with the lions than a day without prayer 
for 40 years someone said the sun did not rise on China that God did not find a missionary Hudson Taylor on his knees for 40 years a missionary Hudson Taylor rose up when the day would get longer he would wake up earlier and he said this for 40 years of his life never once the sun came up without him first being on his knees praying for China I believe the same thing will be happening in our city before the sun rises we already gonna be on our knees pleading for our city pleading for revival believing for the best to come in Jesus name can somebody say amen in 1722 account Nicholas established a community in Germany for exiles of Moravia he called it under the Lord's watch in August 27th 1777 24 men and 24 women have entered into a covenant to create a chain of prayer that will not be broken they started a prayer movement in Germany 24 hours a day 24 men and women in the beginning and then others were added to it this prayer lasted for 100 years without being broken that movement became a missionary movement which eventually affected Charles and, and John Wesley and others that movement created missionaries that were so radical for the gospel the one time they wanted to reach Indies islands and there was no way to go into those islands but as slaves these two guys from this prayer group went on a slaves market sold themselves as slaves went into the Indies islands to preach the gospel and no one ever heard back from them because when we are a praying church we will never be a straying church it will be a powerful church it will be a passionate church we will be a radical church and most importantly we will see the power of God in Jesus mighty name can somebody say amen put your hands together for Jesus Christ someone said worry flourishes in the space prayerlessness creates prayer delights God's ear it melts his heart it opens his hand God cannot deny a praying soul I like what someone says pray when you feel like it is sin to neglect such an opportunity pray when you don't feel like for it is dangerous to remain in such a condition somebody say amen turn to your neighbor say you gotta pray more Billy Graham said to get our nation on its feet we have to get down on our knees first to get our city on its feet you have to get down on your knees to get your home on its feet you have to get down on your knees to get your business on its feet you have to get down on your knees to get your health on its feet you have to get down on your knees Richard Lewis he was one of the guys who was working with our first president in the United States George Washington he sneaked on George Washington and he noticed that every morning at four o'clock in the morning George Washington would escape into a public library get his Bible read his Bible get on knees on his knees and begin to pray to God and this is the habit that our first president cultivated throughout his life there are stories circulating of bullets being shot at him and nothing ever hitting him there are stories circulating where supernaturally God birthed the nation because the general who wasn't a pastor was not a home group leader but he depended upon the king of all kings and the lord of all lords if he was busy and could find time to meet with God at 4 a.m my friend you're not a general you're not a president okay some of some of us we have a lot of free time we just need to kick the laziness in the curve wake up a little bit earlier close yourself in your room and spend time with the Holy Spirit if mornings are not good for you after work lock yourself in the room for 30 for 40 for an hour whatever God leads you to to spend time with the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen Jim Caviezel one of my favorite actors in Hollywood he says if I don't pray I have no gratitude and no appreciation 
If I lose these two things, gratitude and appreciation, I have no zeal for life. That's why prayer is so important. What would, because what the world thinks of me is far less important than what God thinks of me. The world at its best can only like you. That's it. The world does not produce love. Love only comes from God. So you can choose to either be liked by many or loved by one. If a Hollywood actor and I've studied a little bit about his personal life also would wake up very early to go exercise and then go spend time with God. How much more you and I are challenged to really make prayer our lifestyle. Martin Luther said it's possible it's more possible to be alive without breathing than to be a Christian without praying. If you have your Bible I will read one verse from the scripture Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. This is the story of Jesus going up on the mountain. The scripture says the following as he prayed on the mountain the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. His face begins to change. I want to share with you three benefits of living a life of prayer. If you can take your notes and let's take some notes out. Three benefits of living a life of prayer. And I'm not talking about prayer that people pray when someone gets sick. I'm not talking about prayer when you are driving and the police officer is there and you found yourself without updated license tabs. I'm not talking about prayer when you are running late to work. God let every light be green. I'm not talking about prayer when it's your time to date and you know you're so scared and shy and you're about to go ask the girl for a number and your heart is beating so much faster and you're God I'm declaring fast and prayer. I'm not talking about prayer when you didn't study for your math and your chemistry and the test is due and you're praying so that your teacher will get sick. I'm not talking about that prayer and I'm not talking about prayer when your sister who has no cooking experience cooks a meal and you're so hungry and you know you will get poisoned. You're like God your word says everything I drink that is poisoned I will not be I will not be sick. Not that kind of prayer. I'm talking about a life of prayer where you are living a lifestyle of prayer. Can somebody say amen? It's not like that prayer when a pastor one morning he decided to skip church and he went into the woods and so just to relax, just to have fun and as he was there relaxing and having fun he didn't notice there was a bear just going at him really fast and the pastor quickly you know he got on his knees and he said God make this bear Christian so he doesn't attack me. And the bear came close to the pastor and the bear got, got on his knees also. He said, God bless this food as I partake it in Jesus name. <laughs> Not that kind of prayer. But a prayer that is a lifestyle. Somebody say a lifestyle in Jesus name. So the first benefit of prayer I want you to write down is personal transformation. Personal transformation. The Bible says when Jesus prayed, his face was transfigured. Not that he got a plastic surgery, not that his face changed but it started to shine. The first thing that prayer begins to do when you live a life of prayer is that it changes your character. It changes you on the inside. It makes you better person. It makes your face shine. It actually even changes your clothes. Meaning it begins to change your career. It begins to change your attitude. It begins to change your mood. It begins to give you this cleanness inside as though you just took a shower or you just had just had deep cleansing inside of you. Prayer first changes you. You might even start praying to change someone else. You may go into prayer to change your husband. You may go into prayer to change your boss or to change your situation but you will always come out of prayer being changed first. There was a time when Jesus gathered multitudes and he preached the gospel to them and he healed them and then they were really hungry so he fed them. 
The service lasted very, very, very long. And the scripture says, as Jesus dismissed the crowd, he says, everybody, now you ate, now you got healed, now you heard the sermon, go home. His disciples came, Jesus told them, I want you to get in the boat and I want you to all go home also. And the Bible says, and Jesus went up the mountain to pray. If you ever done a service or a conference for a whole day, you know one thing, after that conference, you want to disappear. You want to like a bear go underground for six months. But the last thing that you want to do is number one, go to the mountain and number two to pray. But the Lord Jesus Christ having all of the grace on his life goes up to pray after the most exhausting and the biggest meeting of his life and the bible says he spends day to there till the fourth watch and the fourth watch was about from six from three in the morning till six so right about four o'clock in the morning he's still spending time in prayer and the bible says he comes down from the mountain and guess what happens this is where we meet jesus walking on water after prayer that came at a high price sometimes you know we have a long day so we say you know what tomorrow I'm gonna skip on prayer you're missing your greatest miracle because some of the greatest miracles they follow deepest prayers some of the greatest changes that happens in you when you begin to spend time in prayer but you feel like tired you feel exhausted you feel like you had a long day you feel like you know what I'll just rather sleep in for next 30 minutes and see Jesus knew he was tired but when he went up the mountain when it was the hardest to pray after that prayer he no longer used the boat he started to walk I declare that over your life when you start to pray even when it's not comfortable to you that you will no longer just get drowned in your problems you will walk above your problems you will walk above that situation you will walk above that problem in Jesus mighty name can somebody say amen say I'm a water walker say I'm a water walker in Jesus name because we pray number two is we have divine revelation when Jesus was on a mountain, not only his face was changed, but the Bible says Elijah and Moses appeared. Now they appeared in the Bible. They were on the pages of the Bible, but in here they were no longer on the pages. They were real. What happens in prayer is not only you get changed, but in prayer God begins to make Moses your Moses, uh, I mean your healing. Elisha, I mean your prosperity. The promise here that you have it memorized becomes real. It becomes alive. The Bible says the word becomes flesh. It means that which you believe, that which you read becomes alive inside of you. Becomes alive in front of you. God gives direction. God gives guidance. God gives his instruction and God makes things come alive in your life as you pray. People who pray and don't let the word of God be a part of their prayer will very soon find prayer dry. Will find prayer not interesting or boring. Let me address something for those of us in here who feel like but I've been praying and it's boring or I've been praying but it's become a routine. I've been praying but I seem to not getting much out of it. Typically what people do is they say this, I am burned out. I've been praying every day. I am tired. So guess what I'm doing? I'm taking a break. It's kind of like when a marriage is sour and you're saying I'm so tired of my spouse. I'm just gonna leave him. So the things will get better with me and her. The mistake new beginners make is they always retreat from prayer where the champions advance into it when your prayer is a routine don't stop praying pray more when prayer has become boring once a week add fasting when prayer has become ah oh, just not getting anything just once a month go from 11 o'clock till 6 in the morning I promise you it will literally jump your prayer life to another level 
do not have this victim mentality where oh I just prayed it's just so just not getting anything out of it oh I just need to take a break I need to take a break no 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 no. maybe you need to take a break from Netflix but not prayer you might need to take a break from Starbucks but not prayer you might need to trim your three out workout but listen but instead of cutting prayer you might need to add prayer and that's where breakthrough begins to happen in Jesus name I remember even in the early days when I would feel the same challenges it never would be in my mind to cancel prayer we were taught by our pastor we were taught by our ministers. if you hit a dry spell fast for three days so we never hit dry spells <laughs> we're like oh no my dry spell is wonderful why well, because I don't want to fast <laughs> if your prayer is really struggling great on Friday we finish at 12 you finish at 4 no I'm doing great my Friday prayer is doing wonderful because after that when your mind is like that you begin to put in your best but when you have this weak no I just can't I'll just have to the devil is gonna wipe you out like this if you would have been in the days of Daniel where they put a lot of fidget to the lions you're like man God is not calling me to prayer no more God is calling me to take a break the devil is a liar do not retreat advance somebody said advance in Jesus name and the last thing the prayer benefits us there's many but this one I believe is important is demonic elimination when because we pray demons and curses get eliminated we see Jesus coming down from the mountain and disciples were trying to cast out a demon out of a epileptic boy and Jesus sees that case and the Bible says he right away spoke to that case and he says you deaf and dumb spirit I command you to go out and the demon left the boy the boy was free and Jesus performed a miracle when you live a life of prayer not just once in a while you will notice this thing in your life consistently a victory over demons and over the devil the devil is responsible and he is the cause of a lot of evil in our life and many of us who do not pray we don't deal with the devil because you have to have power of God to deal with the devil and we don't have that feeling of that power no more when we don't pray so what we do is we deal with the evil that devil brings instead of with the devil that brings the evil so we try to fix a husband if there is a generational curse marriage will do very little if there is a curse of divorce on the family counseling will do very little and so what people do is they will spend money they will spend efforts why because they don't have the power necessary to begin to deal with the devil that brings the evil so they waste their energy dealing with the evil that the devil brings Jesus said if your if someone causes one of the little ones to sin it will be better to him to throw a millstone around his neck and drown him and then he said this if your hand causes you to sin it's better for you to cut it off it's interesting he's not saying it's better to cut off the sin your hand is doing think about it he's not saying to cut off the computer that your eye is looking at he's saying to cut off the eye that is doing the looking what most of us do is we deal with the computer Jesus says deal with the root when you spend the time in prayer you begin to deal with the cause for the sin not with the sin that is caused by the sin God will put a millstone on the devil's neck at the end and drown him in the lake of fire but that doesn't change my life today devil who is the cause of humanity's sin will have a millstone around his neck at the end of times but today that doesn't change my life what changes my life is when I take responsibility and I cut the cause which is the devil and the demons who bring the evil who bring the sin and I cut them off in my own life that helps me to enter into life Jesus said can somebody say amen you know if you are in the basement and your basement is flooded how many of you know 
it is the wise thing first of all to find the leak and close the leak instead of getting all of your family members to come and help you mop the floor you can mop the floor until your face turns blue and the water will be keep coming until you deal with the faucet that is broken or a pipe that is cracked I had people sometimes who make fun of us and they directed at me as well they said oh these people believe that you know deliverance fixes everything you don't need deliverance you just need discipline it's true we need discipline but discipline is mopping the floor no fool even people who are not really wise are not gonna mop the floor if the faucet is broken the demon is the broken faucet the devil is the broken faucet and when you break the grip of the devil then you can deal with the evil in your life but without life of prayer you don't deal with the devil the devil deals with you without life of prayer the devil deals with us he punishes us and we go on this goose chase of constantly fixing the symptoms instead of dealing with the roots you heard today the testimony where a lady had constant diseases and sicknesses from one doctor to another what was behind that it was a curse when that was broken then disease is left instead of praying for healing we have to bind and we have to cancel and break the grip of the devil in Jesus mighty name can somebody say amen when I was younger and I was introduced to pornography by one of my friends in Ukraine I was very young uh, probably about 10 or 11 years of age very young and then when we came to United States uh, I got introduced once again and it started a spiral effect of demons of pornography that got a grip on my life for a few years I've confessed it to the pastor I've prayed different prayers I've put different things in my life to try to control that but I still couldn't get that devil out one particular trip it was around September time I went to Spokane and I fell it was somebody else's house I fell into sin it was about over a decade ago and I got so fed up I got so sick and tired of being a young man that has this leprosy this has this this problem in his life that I came home and I declared a seven day fast for myself where seven days I fasted and I prayed and indeed in that seven days I didn't just ask God to forgive me because I prayed those prayers a million times in those prayers I started to attack the demon and trust me I wasn't very educated but I knew one thing that this wasn't my will because I didn't want to do that but something constantly kept pushing me I was disciplined man as the best I could but when I start declare the war and I started to in that prayer to cut off the cause of evil on Saturday my fast ended I felt something new coming and that weekend was the last weekend which was probably over a decade now that the devil had the opportunity to hold to hold the upper hand over my life in the area of purity Jesus said this kind comes only by prayer and fasting there are demons in your life will never leave until you get off of your bed and start praying there are curses that will never be broken until you get up from your blessed assurance Jesus is mine and actually start praying and not just pray a few times but you pray regularly like that Chinese people when they torture people that one drop and after the 40th drop at the same speed at the same time and the criminal begins to feel like a hammer that's hitting his skull when you begin to consistently pray you feel it or not but you pray something happens it breaks the grip of the devil over your life in Jesus name can somebody say amen I want to challenge each one of us to pray more I want to challenge those of us in here who don't pray at all to start praying for those of you who are able to come to morning prayers and you don't live very far to come to morning prayers for those of you who have allowed that room where you used to pray to collect dust I ask you that today you repent and tomorrow God will see you in that room for those of you who prayed in the evenings and that has already been long gone for that to change today for God to begin to beckon you into prayer you don't need to come to church to pray but if you are able to it's highly encouraged you can pray at home you don't have to pray only in the mornings you can pray whenever it's available to you but you have to pray you have to pray personal transformation divine revelation and removing demons and curses out of our life in Jesus mighty name